Osiris is a support. God damn it, I didn't come here for a debate, I came here to make a statement. Osiris for the longest time has been looking for a buddy. But people keep playing him in the solo lane where he's all alone. I mean, sure he does see the jungler from time to time, but usually it's the enemy one and he's already dead. So, today I'm going to be telling you why Osiris is a support and why you should be playing him there for some free elo, baby. So, let's start off with Osiris' passive and we're going to talk about the rest of his abilities soon. But before that, I hear you screaming, Oh, but Osiris is supposed to be a solo laner, you bronze sever noob. And to that I say, yes, you are kind of right, but tell me, would you use a phone to crack open a walnut? I mean, sure, yes, you can do it, but you're not using that phone right. So, on with the video. Osiris is passive, I like to call nine pieces of eight. Each time Osiris uses a basic ability, he loses a part of his body, gaining 2% physical damage mitigation and 1% magical damage mitigation per stack, stacking up to 8 times. Now, once you've stacked up to 8 times, your next 6 successful basic attacks are hasted. That's right, successful. This ain't no hit or miss shitty Apollo passive. No, 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 no. You have to hit these in order to lose the 6 auto attacks and then revert back to normal but this ability also has no internal cooldown which means you can start stacking up again so my boy has natural tankiness mm, I see but what if he had some CC this is where we move on to his first ability chill man here's a blunt Osiris throws a blunt at his enemy making them chill he does a little bit of damage and slows them this only hits one enemy and it's the first enemy he hits whether it be the minion or a god now, yes, this ability is hard to land, the scaling isn't very good, nor is the base damage, and nor is the slow, but the slow duration is 6 seconds, ah, uh, 6 seconds, well, we'll get to that, it's 3 seconds, but it only has a 5 second cooldown, with 0% cooldown reduction. Now, yes, yes, that means you only have 2 seconds to move freely before you get slowed again. And again and again. But remember how I mentioned accidentally that it was a six second slow? Well, that was no accident. Let's get to his second ability, Raining Pain. Osiris deals damage in a target location really far away from him or really close to him, whichever one you want. If he hits an enemy god, he gains increased movement speed. But if the enemy god in question is already being slowed by the effects of his one, then the duration of the slow is refreshed, but it is also increased to 60%. That's right. That means the enemy is slowed for 6 seconds if you hit your 1 and your 2, but remember, your 1 only has a 5 second cooldown. That means level 2, Osiris can slow you for up to 9 seconds. Eh, well, 8 to 9, realistically speaking. But, that's still an 8 second slow, along with kind of a lot of damage going with it. And you still want to tell me that he is a solo laner? I mean, he has tankiness, he has poke. He has slows, but we are only three abilities in. Osiris is three, Judgment Tether, or as I like to call it, Bound and Gagged, and oh baby, she loves it. Osiris tells himself to all nearby enemies. The tether is broken if they move out of range, and if Osiris manages to maintain the tether for four seconds, they are stunned for 1.4. Now, I know what you're thinking, but how can Osiris possibly keep them so close to him for four seconds in order to get the stun? But you are forgetting his eight seconds slow with his one two one combo. And even then, you might be saying, like the fool that you are, and a baby that has lost its bottle of milk. But I can just leap or dash out of it, right? And then still turn around, deal enough damage to kill him and his ADC. And you would be right if you, if I hadn't mentioned his third abilities, first part. Abilities that are hit. Abilities that are hit. Oh my god, uh, I suppose I'm as much of a fool as you. Enemies that are hit by this ability have their damage reduced anywhere from 10 to 30%. Mm, mm, mm. Now I know what you're also thinking, but I can still dash or leap out of it and deal enough damage to kill him, but you are forgetting that the damage reduction is not 
linked to the tether whatsoever. If you just get hit by the initial cast of this ability, your damage is reduced by 30%, regardless of whether or not you break the tether. So you either get stunned and slowed to death, or you get slowed to death while not being able to deal enough damage. A lot of people like Nox Ultimate because it deal does a similar thing. 40% damage reduction, but the thing they are forgetting is that it's really long range, easy to avoid, and doesn't hit as many targets. While Osiris, this is 3, does 30% damage reduction at max rank, yes, max rank, but he only has to be near enemies for it to activate. And people play Nox support, and that is one of the main reasons. So, what have we discussed so far? Osiris has natural tankiness, the ability to not body block his ADC and walk through units for consistent and for consistent and potent sticking potential. An uh, 8 seconds slow, a stun and damage reduction. But I know what you're thinking, he has no mobility, no gank potential and I can just play a healer against him. I mean, the natural counter to poke. But again, you would be wrong. We haven't talked about his ultimate yet, you dummy. Leap of Doom. Osiris sleeps to target location, dealing okay damage with great scaling. But you may be thinking Fenrir can do this on a basic ability, and Kali, why the hell would I play Osiris and on top of that support? Well, my friend, Lord of the Afterlife, as the ability is actually called, applies complete anti heal to all targets hit for 6 seconds and only has a 75 second cooldown. I know, I know. First of all the low cooldown, but second of all complete anti-heal. That means in a team fight if you hit a target that relies on healing like Kali or Aphrodite, suddenly they're doing nothing. They're completely useless. Yes, and on top of that this ability is a pretty de decent ability if you know what I mean. It deals good damage, it's a good distance sleep. I mean, what more do you want? So let's recap, consistent poke, damage reduction, tankiness, complete anti-heal with okay mobility. This guy is a support. I mean, people play Hercules because of his two CC abilities and then just one insane damage. I mean, Osiris can do the same thing just over a longer period of time with very consistent CC. Enemies reduce damage and complete anti-heal. Yes, yeah, so Osiris might not be the best support. I mean, he does have counters. I mean, I think I have yet to encounter uh, something that genuinely counters Osiris, but now let's talk a little bit about his build. First of all, you're going to be starting with Guardian's Blessing and a Glowing Emerald. Now, the Guardian's Blessing is obvious. You're playing some poor human income poop. But the Glowing Emerald is because you want to rush that Gauntlet of Thieves as fast as possible to get it stacking. Now this is assuming that you are even or losing the lane. If you are winning, you may want to leave the Gauntlet of Thieves till third item even. And instead you might want to build boots, obviously you want Warrior Tabby, and then Glad Shield. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know it's not a support item, but Glad Shield is just too good of an item on Osiris, and it's very cost efficient, which is what supports are looking for. Then, in whichever order you want, you can build Blackthorn Hammer or Frostbound Hammer. Now, either of these are good, and you can build one, or even none of them, though I wouldn't recommend it. Generally, you want one of these, or both of these. Depending on what you can afford it or not, they're both extremely useful. I mean, Blackthorn provides cooldown reduction and mana regen, while Frostbound provides even more slows. Then, if you want a bit more tankiness, you can go Pudwin or Mantle of Discord. I'd recommend generally only building one of these unless you really, really need to be tanky. They both provide a better all in as well, as you can just leap in with your ultimates and gain a shield with Pridwin as well as more cooldown reduction and then deal a bit of burst of damage after a few seconds. Or with Mantle of Discord, if you're getting burst down, you can just stun all enemies and gain TC immunity. Now, <coughs> Relics. Look, for the level 1 relic, you want Shell. It's a good safe start. You see, Osiris isn't a very consistent ADC. ADC. He isn't a very consistent support. So you may win the lane if you're good with him, or if you're just anyone else but me, you will probably lose lane. So starting with the Glowing Emerald and Shell is just a good safe start. But if you get more experience with him, you may want to start building Glad Shield from level 1. 
just try to rush it and then for your level 12 relic you either want horrific emblem or thorns it all depends really do you want your enemies to deal even less damage or do you want them to just deal less damage to you it really depends so now just remember that the third and fourth auto attack in Osiris's auto attack chain deal AoE damage. This is excellent for clearing purple buff, but also when clearing the backline minions, the archers, for those of you who are less familiar with the game, aka noobs. <coughs> so that was my guide for Osiris support. I have been playing this for about a season now and it's been extremely fun. It's been kind of consistent, I'll be honest with you. And I've really realize that Osiris belongs in the support role. I think his days in the solo lane are over and I hope you agree with me. Now, go, play it, have fun, and above all, you know, good luck, you're gonna need it.